All right, welcome to the video here um, for the lesson number five on hypotenuse leg. Uh, one of the things that we did not get a chance to finish in class was the on your own question. Um, I know some classes I was able to start it, some classes um, you didn't have time to even start it all as part of your homework assignment. So here's a quick video showing you how to do that. So the first thing that we notice is the first given tells us that BD and AC are perpendicular. So we could show that right here. And actually, I'm going to name those angle 1 and angle 2. That would be easier to put into our proof. And it tells us that AB and BC are congruent. The other thing I notice is that BD is congruent to itself, so that would be the reflexive property. So let's uh, see what this um, proof actually winds up looking like. So the first thing that we have to do here <clears throat> is we have to say that BD perpendicular to AC that's given and then we have to say that angle 1 and angle 2 are right and the reason why is perpendicular lines form right angles so once we say that they're right angles, we then can say that they are congruent. So we could say angle 1 is congruent to angle 2 because all right angles are congruent. So now we know that those two angles are congruent. We also know that AB is congruent to BC by the reflexive property. of congruence and we said that BD was congruent to BD actually this was given my bad I got ahead of myself there AB and BC are congruent because of given and BD is congruent to BD by the reflexive property of congruence now, because we have the hypotenuse and the leg labeled, we have to use hypotenuse leg here, which means that we have to have another bubble coming off of these right angles, saying that triangle ABD and triangle CBD are right. Then we can finally say that the two triangles are congruent. So I could say triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD by hypotenuse leg and we draw arrows from everything here. What single bridge of motion can map one triangle onto the other? That would be a reflection over the line segment BD. You can show it in symbols or you could actually write it in words. All right, let's check out the homework. So for number one, it says, same question that we had in class, what additional information can be used to prove that these two triangles are congruent using hypotenuse leg? Right now, this is a leg that's labeled and a leg that's labeled, so we need the hypotenuse. So if I label the hypotenuse, I would have to say that BC is congruent to WX. Is there more than one answer to question number one? It's kind of a trick question, because in class there was. The answer to this, though, is no, because there's only one hypotenuse in a right triangle. So that's kind of a trick question. Let's look at the next one. We have a proof. As soon as I see this, I'm going to think CPCTC. I see perpendicular, so I know that these are going to be right angles. I'm not going to use numbers there because S and V, that's the only angle that's there. It says that ST is congruent to VT, and I see the reflexive property here. So we can put the perpendiculars in the same circle. And we can say that angle S and angle V are right because perpendicular lines form right angles. Then from that, we can say angle S is congruent to angle V 
because all right angles are congruent. So now I know that I have right triangles, so I can even put that in there. So I can say triangle RST and triangle RVT are right. Right, right angles give us right triangles, so that's part of using hypotenuse leg. I could then say that ST is congruent to VT given. Let's not make that reflexive mistake like I did before. We can say RT is congruent to RT, that's the reflexive property of congruence. Sorry, my handwriting. And then we could say that the two triangles are congruent. So I could say triangle RST is congruent to triangle RVT by hypotenuse leg. Draw my arrows, showing everything that we need to be able to show that. Now, unfortunately, that's not what they're asking us to do. They are asking us to prove that RS is congruent to RV, and we know that by CPCTC. Remember, this always comes after proving that triangles are congruent. Hopefully, these videos are helping you. If they're not, remember, I am after school for extra help. Please, please, please come and see me if you need extra help on any of this. Because remember, these proofs just get harder and harder and harder. I hate to say that, but that's true. Good luck with your homework, and I'll see you all tomorrow.